friends, this is Iman from SB Hacks. Thanks a lot for choosing this YouTube channel to learn signal processing and welcome to my first lecture on Laplace transform. This chapter is super easy and fun. Let's start. As we learned in the last chapter, in order to go from time to the frequency domain, we need to use Fourier series for the periodic signals. But many signals in reality are not periodic. That's why we need to use Fourier transform. The problem is for many useful signals, the Fourier transform is not available. What does this mean? Let's look at this example. This exponential function is given and we want to find Fourier transform. To do so, we simply need to solve this integral. Let's replace xt by the given function. u of t is 0 for t less than 0, so the integral is non-zero from 0 to infinity. And in this interval, u of t is 1. Let's combine the exponential functions into one term. If we find the integral, we get this. Let me separate them again into two functions. I'm doing this because this term is simply cosine plus j sine based on the Euler equation that we learned in the complex numbers lecture. So it's basically oscillation. Now let's replace t by infinity and then t by 0. Exponential power 0 is 1. Again, this term is pure oscillation. e to the power of infinity is infinity. The multiplication goes to infinity. This means the Fourier transform doesn't exist for this function. So here we go. We need something bigger than Fourier transform. This huge monster is called Laplace transform, the master of all transforms. Laplace is remembered as one of the greatest scientists of all time a great mathematician and astronomer who is sometimes referred to as Newton of France. His name is actually engraved on the Eiffel Tower. Laplace transform appears almost everywhere from classical mechanics to differential equation and most importantly control theory. As a matter of fact, Laplace transform forms the foundation of control theory. If you understand this chapter, you're all set for that. Before I continue, I just want to mention that sometimes Fourier transform is shown by x j omega, not x omega. They're exactly the same, but just different notation type. For this chapter, I'm going to use x j omega, and soon you will understand why. From the previous chapter, here's the definition of Fourier transform. And this one is inverse Fourier transform. Now let's start with Laplace transform. Here's the beautiful equation of Laplace transform. S here is a complex variable. Let's write it down as sigma plus j omega. Sigma is the real part and here is the imaginary part. As we learned in the complex numbers lecture, this is the Cartesian representation of the complex number. Now take a deep breath and compare Fourier transform and Laplace transform equation. Let me write them under each other as I want you to clearly see this. Here we have s and here we have j omega. The same story here. This means when s is equal to j omega, Laplace transform becomes Fourier transform. s becomes j omega if the real part of s is zero, which simply means all the points on the imaginary axis. This implies that Laplace transform becomes Fourier transform on the imaginary axis, or in other words, if you can replace s by j omega. Please note that I'm saying if. Sometimes when you replace s by j omega, the integral goes to infinity, which means the Fourier transform is not even available. I will talk about this issue in the upcoming lecture, and I will make it crystal clear for you, I promise. Now let's talk about inverse Laplace transform. This is a very ugly equation, but don't worry about it as I'm not going to use it to find the inverse Laplace transform. I will simply use tables and properties to travel back from Laplace domain to the time domain. So chill out, my friend. Let's go back to the beautiful equation of Laplace transform. You might say, Iman, wait a second. If Laplace transform and Fourier transform are basically very similar, how come for many signals Fourier transform does not exist but Laplace transform is available? The answer to this legit question comes down to one and only one thing, rock or region of convergence. Rock basically describes 
Under what condition the Laplace transform integral converges, or in other words, under what condition xs is available? So remember, xs and rock go hand in hand. One without another is not complete and meaningful. Oops, sorry, I made a small mistake here. The integral variable in inverse Laplace transform is s, not t. It doesn't matter anyway, as I'm not going to use this ugly equation. Now I want to solve some examples to practice Laplace transform and makes the concept behind the region of convergence crystal clear. First example, xt is unit step and the question is what is the Laplace transform? To find xs, we need to find this integral. Let's replace xt by u of t. ut is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 after that. So the integral is simplified to this. Let's find the integral. As I mentioned, s is a complex variable, sigma plus j omega. To discuss the region of convergence, let's replace s in the exponential power by sigma plus j omega. Then I'm going to separate it into two exponential terms. Replace t by infinity minus replace t by 0. Exponential to the power of 0 is 1. So we end up with minus 1 divided by s. Minus is cancelled by minus, and we get this. Based on the Euler equation, this is pure oscillation. This guy, on the other hand, dictates the convergence destiny. To elaborate that, I'm going to consider two scenarios. In the first scenario, sigma is less than 0, or basically negative. So the exponential term is minus minus infinity and we get e to the power of infinity. This function goes to infinity multiplied by oscillation and we end up with infinity. This means if sigma is negative, the integral doesn't converge. On the other hand, in the second scenario, sigma is greater than zero. So here we get a positive number multiplied by minus and we end up with e to the power of minus infinity, plus the rest. This term is zero multiplied by oscillation, so we get zero. Therefore, xs is equal to this term. This expression is valid if and only if this condition is true. As was mentioned, s is a complex variable, and sigma is basically the real part of it. So this condition means the real part of s must be greater than zero. This is the rock or region of convergence. You can easily plot this on the Cartesian coordinate system. The real part for all the points on the imaginary axis is equal to zero. When the real part is greater than zero, it means we are on the right side of the imaginary axis. So to recap, here is the Laplace transform of u of t, and here is the corresponding rock, which dictates where this expression is valid. Done. Next example. xt is an exponential function multiplied by ut, and we want to find the Laplace transform. To find xs, we should solve this integral. Let's replace xt by the given function. Unit step function is 1 from 0 to infinity and 0 before that. So the integral can be simplified to this. Let's combine both terms and find the integral. Again, s is a complex variable, sigma plus j omega. To discuss the region of convergence, I'm going to replace s in the exponential power by sigma plus j omega. Both sigma and 2 are the real numbers, so let's group them together. Multiply it by the imaginary part. I just want to emphasize that the reason that I considered sigma and 2 together was the fact that both of them are real numbers. After separating the real part, we end up with this complex exponential function, which is pure oscillation. Now, the destiny of convergence is dictated by this term. First, let's replace t by infinity, then by 0. Exponential to the power of 0 is 1 divided by s plus 2. To find the region of convergence, we should probe into this term. Let's consider two scenarios for this real number. In the first scenario, this is less than zero or a negative number. In this case, 
This term is negative multiplied by negative, so we get plus infinity, and here's the rest. This guy goes to infinity multiplied by pure oscillation, and we get infinity. So the whole thing diverge. In the second scenario, this is a positive number. In this case, we have positive multiplied by negative so we get minus infinity and here's the rest. This term goes to zero multiplied by pure oscillation. So we get zero. In this case, xs is simplified to this beautiful term. This is valid if and only if this condition is true. Again, sigma is the real part of s. So this expression can be written like this which means real part of s must be greater than minus 2. This is our rock or region of convergence. Let's plot it. The real part for all the points on this line is equal to minus 2. Here we are saying greater than minus 2. So this is our land of convergence. To recap, the Laplace transform is valid if and only if this condition is true. Again, Remember, Laplace transform and rock go hand in hand. Done. Last example to make sure that you fully get it. This function is given and we want to find Laplace transform. Here is the Laplace transform integral. Let's replace xt by the given function. u of minus t is 0 for t greater than 0 and 1 before that. So the integral is simplified to this. Let's combine the terms and find the integral. S is a complex number. To find rock, I'm gonna replace S by sigma plus j omega. Similar to the previous example, I'm gonna group sigma and 2 together as both of them are real numbers. Now let's replace t by 0 and then by minus infinity multiplied by another minus here. Again, minus infinity multiplied by the minus sign. Here we go. This term is pure oscillation and the convergence of the whole thing is dictated by this term. Let's consider two scenarios again. In the first scenario, sigma plus 2 is positive. So here we get plus infinity. This term goes to infinity multiplied by pure oscillation and we get infinity. So the whole thing doesn't converge. On the other hand, in the second scenario, the real term is negative. In this case, we get minus here and we end up with minus infinity. This term is zero multiplied by pure oscillation. So we get zero and Laplace transform becomes this. This term is valid if and only if this condition is true. As sigma is the real part of s, we can write this expression like this, which simply means real part of s is less than minus two. This is the rock for xs. Again, they go hand in hand. Done. Before I let you go, I want you to carefully look at the second and third examples again. In the second example, we have this function and the Laplace transform was this. In the third example, we have a different function in the time domain, but the Laplace transform was the same. So we have the same x's but different xt. The main difference comes from the fact that the above expression is valid when the real part of s is greater than minus 2, but the bottom one is valid here. So in fact, they have completely different region of convergence. That's why Laplace transform without rock is not complete. And if you, if you just give me xs, I don't know which function you're talking about. So remember this forever xs and region of convergence go hand in hand. Okay, that's all for this lecture. In the next tutorial, I will teach you five golden rules that you can use to find rock super quick in a matter of seconds. Here's what I promise. By the end of next lecture, you can call yourself a rock star. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next video.